Hello, Mike Kako. Joe Souza here. Actually got some special guests in the house. Hey. Mr. Aldrin Guerrero, Mr. Uh -huh. Matt Dahlberg. And we're here actually to talk about strings. So high G, low G, what G? It's all G. We're going to learn a lot on The Breakdown. So we're here to talk about strings. And you know, what is right, what is wrong? Really, it's more of a personal thing. And we thought, what a, a what could be a better opportunity to get together with these masters of ukulele and pick the brain of these masters as far as what strings they prefer and why you prefer them. So let's go ahead. We'll start with Audrey. Uh, thank you. Um, I developed these strings called AG cross AQ with Aquila. So the story goes, I'm, I'm actually not too big of a fan of the Aquila Corde Nile Guts. And the white on strings. a yeah, the yeah. white strings. So on a trip over to Italy, um, I had a chance to see the factory and how they make their stuff, and and they asked me like, what do you think of our strings? And as as a very transparent person, I'm like, uh, not really, you know, like I, but you know, as as uh, as they were, they're like, well, you know, could you help us make something that you do like? And I'm like, that's that's a great move, you know, like if if there's something that that. Uh, that I don't quite agree with, then they said, you know, why don't you create something for us that you do like? And uh, that gave me an opportunity to create AG Cross AQ. And uh, the set of strings that I like to use um, has the clarity, has the tone, has the high tension, has uh, has the brightness that I'm looking for. I play Kanileo ukuleles, so they have a more darker tone with um, with a not, you know, not to uh as, as far as the, the brightness goes i like their brightness but i could go a little bit more okay so with the strings um that gives me exactly that because i feel that if i went with any other string that is bright it would be too bright okay mm -hmm. so the kanile ukuleles already have a brightness to them but i feel that the kind of brightness that ag cross aq brings is a nice clean clear kind of brightness but there's an asterisk to it because mm -hmm. as much as i love the set of strings ag cross aq whenever i'm on tour and i'm on tour currently right now as we're filming this mm -hmm. um, i'm actually using uh diodario pearl artes and the reason being is because every single set of string that i've uh every set of strings that i've used just don't acclimate to the you know, to the temperature changes that well and and this you know this is ag cross aq uh, Aquila, Pro Artes, um, the Dario Titaniums, a bunch of the string savers that you know that I've that I've tried out, they just don't do that well. In cold temperatures, they get a little bit too sharp. In uh, in warmer temperatures, they get a little bit too hot. So it, you know, if if I'm in a cold auditorium, if I'm playing for something like that, um, then you know they they tend to be kind of pitchy. Mm -hmm. But if I'm, you know, if I'm on a, in an outside venue, they tend to be kind of flat and pitchy in that sense. The pro artes, although they do tend to get pitchy, they tend to acclimate a little bit better. All right. And um, that's why on tour, I use the uh, Diodari pro artes. So even though I'm sacrificing the clarity and the tone that I'm used to with the AG Cross AQ, I just figured for the, you know, for, for the performance sake and for the audience and for just the tour, uh, it's just safer mm -hmm. to go with the Diodari Pro Artes. Mm. That makes sense. You know, and, and knowing the difference between the Aquila and because for years we used Aquila on mm. our Kanilea, but you know, the sound that you're looking for and how the string can really help to shape that exact sound. Yeah. And then for you, Matt, what strings do you prefer? Yeah, I actually prefer the same ones that uh, Aldrin's using on tour. Um, mm. I've used them for a number of years now. Um, I like the, the Prarte strings for a lot of the same reasons, that kind of consistency, right? You know exactly what you're getting. Um, but then I also really like them because they're actually kind of dull, which sounds funny, but they give you this nice bass line to kind of color your tone with your technique and with your playing. So if I want to play something that's really warm and mellow, or I want to play something that's really bright and harsh, I can kind of have that control. I'm not starting with too bright of a sound right away. Um, and so a lot of my students ask me, you know, what kind of strings do you use? And I always kind of ask the question back, like, okay, which are you asking which strings I use? Or are you asking what strings I recommend you use? Because depending on the, the person, it, it really makes a big difference. They're a very, very subjective thing. And so with those uh, Pro Arte strings, they're nylon, they're thick, really heavy tension, really great sustain, and they work really well when you're a little bit more of an advanced player, especially if you play with some nails and, you know, really dig in a bit. 
Um, but if you're not quite there yet um, in your journey, then using a string that's a little bit softer can really be great. Other strings that I recommend are like Worth uh, Clear Strings. Mm -hmm. um, Savarez Alliance is another one uh, that, I've, that I've enjoyed in the past. Um, and if I were to like cut off my nails and, you know, just kind of sit on the couch and play, mm -hmm. I'd use very different strings because I'd have a you know, I need different tools for the job, so to speak. Right, um, right. My favorite analogy with strings is they're like tires for your car, mm -hmm. and they're meant to be replaced. Change your strings, people. Like, uh, <laughs> if you think it's time, it's probably well, <laughs> well past time. You know, tires wear and the tread goes away, and you want to replace them. But that same logic is get the right tires for the right job, right? You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to be taking your slick tires on a mountain pass. So, uh, right, find right. the right right tool for the job. Yeah. yeah. Which makes sense, of course. And, you know, just kind of touching real briefly on sound, how sound is so much like taste, right? You know, some people like spicy or savory. Some people like sweet, you know, or really sound in that same kind of world is really subjective. You know, some people like bright. Some people like a little warm. Some people like a little mellower tone. And sometimes it's a, it's a reflection of their personality, too. You know, it's just what really sounds good to them. And, you know, how we had touched real briefly on, you know, for years we used Aquila and great strings, you know, and the great tone, a lot of volume. But with Kahiao coming in and really kind of diving, deep diving into what strings would really work good as we start to move forward. And eventually finding the worth strings, you know, the worth clears as kind of the, you know, I would, I want to say all purpose string for either a new player or for someone who's coming over from maybe a, a, a you know, an, an introductory or intermediate ukulele and stepping into really their first high-end instrument, like, hey, these strings feel nice. You know, the it's sound is good. One size fits all. Yeah, it, kind of deal, really right? Yeah. And then from there, it was a matter of, well, we have to find strings that also are going to be able to fit our whole line, right? Because we have a five string, a six string, an eight string, you know, the high C, the low A, and everything that kind of plugs into what's going to become Akanilea. So having all of that said, you know, we really found the right string for a starting point, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. we always recommend try different strings, go for yeah. it, you know, and it, yeah. it is an extension of your personality. For right? sure. <clears throat> yeah, trying different strings. Good right. idea. Yeah. And there's, there's no one master set of strings that'll work with everything. So you right. really got to listen to the personality of your ukulele, you mm -hmm. know, like uh, if your ukulele is a little bit more on the uh, you know on the darker side and you want like you know you want to brighten it up a little bit you can but it also depends on your playing style as well you know mm -hmm. like the um, the thickness the, of the gauges and the um it, you want high tension low tension it's just it all really comes down to that so right. finding the right perfect strings for you is is very 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 important as an ukulele player and i suggest just like what matt said he's you know he's tried them all he likes mm -hmm. savarez he likes pro artes and he likes all these and really that's the only way that you'll you'll figure it out by by asking people like us like what you know what what we prefer mm -hmm. you can start off there try out what you know try what we like but mm -hmm. ultimately try them all and, yeah. and see, you know, if, if you have the you know, the resources to do so, try as many as you can. And then you can pick and choose what works for you. Yeah. Right. Strings make a difference. A lot of times people think, oh, that doesn't matter. And it, it really does. I mean, yeah. I've had ukuleles uh, that are incredibly nice with a set of strings where it's just like, this this sounds not nearly as nice as I think it should. And then you throw on a different set and it's like a completely different instrument. And right. Right. some respond more to certain sets than others and everything mm -hmm. else. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you're playing, you can also, as you evolve with your playing, your strings might change. You know, if you're first starting out and you're playing really softly, you might gravitate more towards loud and bright strings because it increases that with your playing. But then as you get better, maybe you warm up your strings, darken your strings, do something that's a little bit more mellow mm -hmm. and let your playing kind yeah. of push that. And so the uh, the, the Dodario Pro Artes, I didn't like at first. Mm -hmm. I thought they were too dull. And mm -hmm. as I tried other sets, I just kind of kept coming back mm -hmm. to them and realizing, hey, these are the best strings for all the general purposes that I want to get yeah. for tone. Right, right, right. And, uh, you know, what? from my experience, a lot of beginners, when uh, when they try out different strings, 
um, it's always a common misconception of loud equals good. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't necessarily mean that. Uh, for example, um, the the Aquila Nile guts, mm -hmm. very loud. But I feel like the personality is if if you could see sound waves, the sound wave will go, will hit, go go in the room, and then come right back. You know, and that's not necessarily what you want. It'll it'll hit the back wall and come right back to you. You want there to be a good sustain. You know, with the uh, with with each hit, you don't want it to just pierce through and then drop. You know, like that's not what you want. You want there to be a nice, lasting, and very uh, whole, you know, and round tone to your to your ukulele. But then again, you know, if if uh, if you like really really bright really fast attacks mm -hmm. that might be right for you and that's why i'm saying you really got to try it out because if that fits then that fits yeah if you're playing in a band and mm -hmm. singing and need to project and that's right. you know cut through then you're going to use a different set of strings yeah or like an ukulele else. club and there's like a hundred of yeah. you in the ukulele club and you really got to stand yeah. out yeah maybe nile guts is a you know is yeah. a great choice for that i also yeah. find that the nile guts tend to have a really consistent tone Mm -hmm. across all kind of price ranges so mm -hmm. you know a, a 300 dollars ukulele with nile gut strings mm -hmm. and a 3000 dollars ukulele with nile gut mm -hmm. strings i'll actually hear oh they have the same strings right. and i don't think other strings necessarily do that you can mm -hmm. kind of hear more of the ukulele like uh with the worths mm -hmm. uh you know those really can bring out those overtones right. and those uh, points of resonance that really separate the instrument uh, yeah. and the quality yeah. yeah, you gotta think about feel also because mm -hmm. like the feel of the strings on your you know on your fingers. I tend to go up and down the neck all the time when I'm mm -hmm. playing faster paced songs, and with something like the Nile guts, they're a little bit drier. Mm -hmm. And even with something like Worth strings, mm -hmm. like the Worth Browns, you know, for example, they're mm -hmm. they're a little bit you know a little bit sticky and, and, and dry. But the Worth clears are great, like they glide through. So just different materials, it it, it all really matters, mm -hmm. you know, all of it. Mm -hmm. It's all subjective. So if yes. you're if you're home yeah. there, you're like, I love my Worth Browns. Yeah, keep one loving them. man's like, medicine absolutely. is another man's poison. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it it does reflect on tone. And you know, I mean, a big question we always got is like, hey man, I want my action as low as possible. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I want high tension strings, low action. It's like, okay, we can do that, but not necessarily are we talking ease of playability yeah. Yeah. with that combination. You yeah. might be able to have your action not as low, but with a lower tension string, mm -hmm. still get great volume from your instrument and actually have easier playability. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not just a, okay, this, this, this combination is mm -hmm. going to be the right combination for me. It can mm -hmm. be, oh, if I went with a medium tension or a lighter tension with a little bit more action, we're talking, you know, 0.5 of a millimeter kind right, of stuff right. that, hey, you can get just that right feel, mm -hmm. the right tone. And the combination of playability with that right feel and tone mm -hmm. with something that not necessarily is a high tension, mm -hmm. yeah. super low action. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. The high tension strings uh, tend to be favored by people who are playing solo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I prefer high tension. And, I like high tension. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I think we also play with higher actions, generally yes. speaking. Yes. And uh, that's, you know, a combination to kind of get more sound out of the instrument. Mm -hmm. And it's as as you're learning to play and as you're trying different things you will get better and right. your strings and setup can kind of reflect that and so it's kind of fun because mm -hmm. something that you might try today that you think oh that's not for me right. a year from now might be oh that's the sound i'm looking yeah, for yeah yeah so right, right. yeah it's it's uh with with high tension strings you want the attack and the response to be you know to be right on it when you hit that note as you know as a faster player as a technical player i want to be able to feel the string and then hear the note as soon as i hit it i don't mm -hmm. want it i don't want there to be any kind of delay when you know when when the, when the strings start to move i want it as soon as my you know as my fingers release mm -hmm. the other uh, string Bam! There's that. There's that attack. And then the continued right. sustain right. after, so you can color the note with vibrato yeah. mm -hmm. or whatever else. Exactly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, high tension that just does it for me. Yeah, but for sure. you know, at the same time, high tension strings, pretty tough in the fingers. So right. if you're a beginner and you're like, "Huh, I heard of these high tension strings that they're talking about," and you try it out for yourself, you're like, 
why are my fingers hurting all the time? <laughs> it's like if you're learning to snow ski mm -hmm. and you get the advanced skis that are really thin when you're first starting. It's like, what? You know, you, you start with the big fat uh, skis again. to get, <laughs> to try to get that control and learn that. And mm -hmm. then, you know, as you level up, so to speak, you, right. you, mm -hmm. you move on to different things to get, yeah. you know, the diff different tools for different jobs. So. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you don't have to level up to a high tension. If, mm -hmm. you, if you're just, you know, like a very, very lax player, mm -hmm. you can stay with the uh, you know normal or, sure. or low tension mm -hmm. and just keep it casual you right. know right and still get great tone from your instrument. Yes. absolutely yes yeah and i think you know just to kind of summarize our whole conversation strings are so unique and strings are very special for each of us and it's a matter of finding the right string for you mm -hmm. so absolutely experiment play with different strings play with different action you know and understand that there's a cause and effect to each of them but more importantly Play ukulele. That's play ukulele. the most important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, strings can only get you so far. You got to put in the work. That's right. <laughs> put in the work there, you know? <laughs> well, thank you guys for giving us some Absolutely. great thank insight you. Thank into you. the strings you guys prefer and, you know, what just fits right for your playing style and for your ukulele. And thank you guys for listening in and just kind of hearing what we had to offer as far as on the breakdown. You know, if you like this video, go ahead, smash that like button. If you have any comments, please go ahead and leave it there and we'll get back to you. Of course, Mr. Audrey Guerrero, Mr. Matt Dahlberg, wonderful guests here on The Breakdown. Everybody stay safe, keep strumming, and aloha. Change your strings. <laughs>